All right, so we all know why you're here. Past Dave said, ah, present Dave will be fine. I know how to use a sewing machine. I'm just gonna use my wife's sewing machine to sew a cover for my boat out of heavy duty canvas on a domestic sewing machine. What could possibly go wrong, right? Yeah. Well, it has gone wrong because you've searched in YouTube for how can I fix my wife's sewing machine before she gets home and busts my balls? Or perhaps the other one is, I thought I was really smart, borrowed my wife's sewing machine, she's back in two hours and I need to get it fixed before she gets back and all the shops are shut. Help. So either of those two keywords is probably what got you here. And uh, we're gonna help you. We're gonna show you how to fix a brother LS2125 domestic sewing machine when you bug it at well, good day YouTube, JB from Oz here. I have for today a bonza treat, a treat especial. You're joining me here in the room formerly known as my wife's sewing room, now known as my torture chamber. I know what you're thinking. Who's this guy? What's he on about? But here's the thing. You found me based on my unique keyword special search. Help save me. I'm about to lose my balls because I've busted my wife's sewing machine. How the hell do I fix it? And here you are. All right, well, here we go. The problem, as we all know, is you sat down, you said to your wife, your partner, whoever, I just want to sew up some seat covers for the Monaro, or I just needed to make a boat cover for the yacht, or uh, look, I just uh, felt I needed to sew my pants up because I've uh, blown one too many holes out through the back end. So look, we all know that you got here somehow. What we do know is that you're stuck with what you promised was going to be a no damage outcome. You said, hey, look, I know how to sew. I'm not going to break it. And uh, you're here now because you did. We're going to start with the pep talk. This is a domestic sewing machine. There isn't a lot that can go wrong with them. You can do very little to break them. Unfortunately, you have broken it. It is buggered. But the good thing is, it can't get any worse than this. So we're all uphill from here. Well, I mean, it is possible that it could get worse in that maybe whilst trying to fix it, you break it more and you end up having to replace the thing. But let's face it, you've already broken a machine you said you're not gonna break. So let's move on to the practical advice of how do we fix it. What's actually happened? Well, domestic sewing machine, like an industrial sewing machine, has some pretty technical components. In here, we have a needle. On top, we typically have something called thread. And somewhere in the middle, underneath, I mean, this in itself is a bit of a trick, how the hell to get inside there. Down under, there's this thing called a bobbin. So basically what happens is the machine does a bit of a, a weeble wobble and in that weeble wobble the needle goes up and down, the thread gets wrapped around the bobbin and it makes a stitch. Easy huh? And then you've just tried to go through 16 layers of canvas on your wife's domestic home machine and for some reason it just doesn't stitch anymore. Whether or not it's broken apart and thrown all these parts on the ground at the same time is debatable. But no matter how many times you rewire this thread up and through, it's just not producing a stitch anymore. Bugger, you say. I told her I wasn't going to break it, you say. I didn't think I was going to break it, you say. But you did. It's broken. All right. Good news is, they are pretty simple machines. There's going to be, in the back, a whole pile of gear driven drivetrain and in the back is a belt. Why is that good news you say? Well because the belt is the bit that's going to have jumped out of time and that's what we're going to fix today. Find the screws and try and pull the covers off. Of course this is the bit where you can break it even further so make sure you've got your Superman undies on and let's see what we can see. First step, remove the power. 
Now I know what you're thinking. I turned it off at the wall. It's all good. But there's no point wriggling on the floor if at the end of the day, you could have just unplugged the power now and not ended up. Part the second. We need to figure out how to get the cover off. And so there will typically be some screws. So we start with that.
because now we're gonna get a spray back on just to get back that cover off. Right, I should. I'm gonna get that out. Don't say anything about the reason why the truck cover's not coming off yet. Except for if they cook somebody here. Hey, so that's how easy it is. No problem, easy, job done. I told you it was easy, right? Just have to clip the clip and it's open. All right, so here comes the mystery. What's buggered? So we have a drive belt. Typically, it's the drive belt that gets out of time. And on this particular monstrosity, it might not be that yet. So we'll have to dive in deeper. So, first things first, before we forget, is to put all the screws that we didn't need to unscrew back in. including our little happy friend up in here. Or do we? Do we want to get in the back? Maybe we do want to get in the back. What do you reckon, people? Let's say we do. Let's say we undo this one. So you can see what I can see. Down deep in here, we've got a gear being driven, but reaching the end of its stroke, not actually the end of Not actually the end of the gear. So we've jumped a teeth 
I've actually jumped two teeth, I think, in there. So we need to find a way of releasing the pressure and bringing that gear back. So one of the things that needs to happen is that At the point where the needle is coming up, we need to be running our hook, our, our thread hook has to be going behind the thread. And what's happening at the moment is it's happening too late. It should be happening about there. So the gear drive that we have that drives that is not occurring at the right time. But how do we adjust that? Yeah. Yeah. Done, done. Spring all the time. Yeah, it's 
So, after all that jiggery pokery, what's important is the rack and the tooth in there are tied such that the first tooth in is the first tooth on. you can see and at that point there's a solid so we want the first tooth on the rack to engage on the first tooth there coming in from the side and of course that Spring has taken this moment. Okay. So now the entire travel occurs without the white piece of plastic lifting through to the end, through to the other end. All right. Now we can bring this back into position. Lock on our shaft, lock on our clamp, and then reassemble. All easy, huh? Check that out. Take a look around the front. We need to reinstall our bobbin sweep assembly. See, look at that, beautiful timing. Bring you in close so you can see what I'm seeing. As the needle comes up, as the needle comes up, that pointy bit of the hook swings behind the needle, wraps down, flips it over around under the bobbin, needle comes out again, Reset position, another sort itch. So that's all that was wrong. The timing was out. And on this one, the timing is a real simple one to set because we've got that ramp in place. Put that in. We'll set it up and see if we can't sew a stitch or two.
Can't really see. Let's see if we can zoom in a bit. So, needle comes down. Needle gets pulled back. Thread gets pulled around. So it comes over the front of the bobbin like that. That point it pulls up. Look at that, we've looped a bobbin thread. So that is our first stitch. Then she goes, loops around again, comes over the front of the bobbin case, pulls again. And we put all the stitches. Clear as mud, eh? Now I'm just going to figure out how to put the thing back together again. A little captive knot that fell out of here, goes back in. And then on the other side, we'll put a screw on bit in there. Yep, put the finger there, second finger, third finger, because of course you can never have too many fingers on the job. Put the finger in there. On our short screw, which I think, if I recall correctly, is the R switch connection. One, two, three. God damn it. All right, I got one screw here. Hey, 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 that's 
the one for there. Hey, that's one there. All right, so tricks, traps, and whatnots. It's just this one clip that was giving us grief. So when we put them back together, we want to make sure as to just give the plastic a bit of a bruise back. You know, run it back with your nail. Don't hit it with anything hard. That way you can pretend like you never were in there. Tricky. Tricky. Ah, of course, because you know what else we've got to do? The tricky, tricky. Just lose a couple more screws. But not only that, once this is in and on, you have to lock this one up here too. Don't forget, you've got to lock this one up. Tricky. Tricky, tricky. Everything clear. Sounds a bit crunchy, but that's a domestic sewing machine for you. Another one in the back. Another one in the bottom. Better do a test switch, eh? Mm -hmm. Alright, Manly Man Skills number 63, how to thread a sewing machine. Take your bobbin case, look at the angle of the screw, points that way, put your thread pointing that way also. Alright, so now it's pulling and unwinding that way, then you pull it to the left. And then, put your bobbin in there. That's your bottom bit, now for your top bit. Okay. 
has pretty pictures on the top. Ah, bugger. Always be sure to look at the pretty pictures on the top before bolting this back on. Because otherwise, you might have to go all the way back in again. Let's see, huh? by having it on its back so gravity helped. It was in hindsight marvelous. Right. Now we have to get that done in Zia. See if we can do it in tweezers. How typical is that? Just at the money shot, we lost the video. Anyway, that last little bit, yeah boy, we got a result. So, I was able to fix this without having to pull all the other covers back off again, which I'm pretty happy with. So now, we're going to put our last cover on. cover we will do a test so take our thread on the top follow our instructions so if we're coming down to here we then go down around our tensioner in around our retensioner Through the needle. One, two, three. Come on, you bugger. All right, there you go. it's threaded. Turn the needle. Okay, now we have threading. And a piece of fabric to do a stitch with.
see what happens when we say bubble wrap. Essentially, you wouldn't normally say bubble wrap, but there we go. Stitches, sewn, bubble wrap. Sewing machine, fixed. Ta da! So, that is how to recover from breaking a Brother LS2125 sewing machine. All that before your wife comes home. All right, YouTube, we've done the deal. We've fixed this machine. We're now out in the room formerly known as the uh, entertainment space, about ready to crack open a beer. Now that we've got our sewing machine back and together. Phew. How good is that, eh? Result. Thanks heaps for watching. If you like this, please share, subscribe, and watch some of my other videos. Thanks, guys.